This shearing handpiece, although not a very large piece of mechanism, is of vital importance to this country. For it's with a handpiece such as this, and the many thousands of others like it, that shearers remove almost the whole of Australia's wool clip each year. A wool clip which provides this country with almost half its export earnings. Here in this modern factory, we see some of the manufacturing processes that are necessary for the production of hand pieces. From milling, hardening and cutting of the essential parts, to the final grinding and polishing of the combs and cutters. After final assembly and testing, these hand pieces will soon be hard at work shearing the wool off at an amazing rate, equivalent to nearly four million pounds of wool per day, every day of the year. All sheep were hand-shorn with blades such as this pair before mechanical shears came into existence about 70 years ago. These early type mechanical shears date from about 1894, and this model came out in 1902. Over the years, many modifications were made to the original hand pieces, but the principle behind the actual working of them is much the same today as it was when they were first invented. As Australia's sheep numbers grew, shearing by hand had become too slow for the rapidly growing flocks, although some remarkable tallies were put up by some of the old blade shearers. Some wool growers and stud breeders still have their sheep shorn by hand, but blade shearing today has now become almost a lost art. For practically the whole of Australia's flocks of well over 120 million sheep are now shorn with mechanical shears. Although the method of holding sheep for shearing has not greatly changed since the first sheep were shorn here, the coming of mechanical shears was a great step forward in the shearing industry. Mechanical hand pieces greatly speeded up the job, but they didn't take any of the hard, back-breaking work out of it. Today, another great step forward has been taken with the invention of the shearing table. This particular type of table is bolted to the floor in a fixed position in front of the down tube. It's pivoted in the center and revolves through a full circle to permit the shearer to shear both sides of the animal from the one position. The scissors action of the arms holds the animal's hind legs to any width required. The feet are held in spring-loaded clips which hold the sheep's feet firmly. The height and length of the arms can also be adjusted to accommodate sheep of any size. We'll have a look at a sheep being shorn on this table. The sheep is taken from the catching pen in the normal way and lifted onto the table. Both hind legs and one front leg are clipped in and the animal is then ready for shearing after any necessary adjustments to the table have been made. The belly wall is removed first as is done when shearing normally. The shearer does not have to strain forward to remove the belly wool as he stands directly over the animal when shearing it. This should help greatly to minimize damage to ewes and weathers at shearing time. With the belly wool removed, the crutch is then cleaned out. Here again, there's no strain on the shearer or sheep, and as the sheep's hind legs are firmly held, it cannot kick or struggle. After the crutch is cleaned out, the shearer turns the table and then shears over the tail. The shearer is able to stand easily and comfortably as he doesn't have to keep the animal in check. The arms of the table do this for him. With the wool removed from over the tail, the shearer then opens up the neck wool. The sheep's head is held back firmly and the machine runs up the neck. It's been claimed that over 50% of the effort required to shear a sheep is taken up by the necessity of holding the animal while shearing it. 
This effort is entirely eliminated by the use of shearing tables. The use of shearing tables will no doubt create the adoption of different shearing procedures to those used now. The shearer is saved the heat and discomfort of working in the old manner as he doesn't have to hug the sheep to his body. He doesn't have to strain to do any blows and this should make for easier and better shearing. The first side of the animal is finished off and the shearer then revolves the table so that the other side of the sheep is brought around in front of him. With long blows down this side, the shearer commences the finishing off blows. He holds the sheep's skin tight with his left arm pressing against the animal's side and keeps the comb flat on the skin all the time. It's claimed that by the use of shearing tables, second cuts are practically eliminated because the sheep is held in the one position for the whole shearing operation. The animal is then finished off and lifted from the table and put down the chute to the counting out pens. As you can see, the fleece is left in a compact heap on the table ready for picking up, which is done in the normal way. There are several types of shearing tables available. This table operates at floor level so that the shearer can catch load his own sheep. The shearer stands in a hole let into the floor when shearing sheep on this table. The principle of holding a sheep firmly on a table in order to shear it is the same in all shearing tables, although different makers employ different ways of doing it. This is another type of table which incorporates a loading ramp where sheep are loaded onto the table which is then wheeled to the shearer. All the sheep's feet are clamped in and the arms are adjusted up or down to suit different sized sheep. The arms holding the sheep's legs can be rolled over towards the shearer or away from him as needed whilst he's shearing. The side of the table drops down to allow the shearer to stand in closer to the animal if necessary. When the table is wheeled to the shearer, a differential is locked underneath and the table cannot be moved laterally, but it can revolve in a complete circle as required. A shortened down tube is used and shearing proceeds normally. When he's finished shearing the sheep, the shearer lifts it from the table and puts it down the chute. The empty table is then wheeled away and another loaded table brought to the shearer. For larger sheds, a chain system using six tables on a motor-driven rotating mechanism has been produced. The sheep are loaded onto the tables at one point by an automatic loading ramp. The legs are clipped in and the sheep is then ready for shearing. When a sheep is loaded, it goes to the first shearer who removes the belly wool and cleans out the crutch. The second shearer opens up the neck wool and cleans down over the shoulder. As the first and second shearers complete their sections, the machine revolves again to bring this animal to the third shearer. He removes the wool from one side of the animal using long blows from the tail to the head. Meanwhile, another sheep is loaded, ready for shearing. While the third shearer is removing the wool from his part of the animal, the first and second shearers are doing their sections. When the third shearer has finished down the side of the sheep, the machine revolves again, bringing the sheep to the fourth shearer, who rolls the sheep over and finishes it off.
Using the chain system, shearers work as a team, with each man shearing only his allotted section of each animal. And as the sheep go back to their paddocks to grow more wool, the inventive minds of men keep striving to further improve the mechanical means of shearing sheep. And so, a great industry moves forward. <laughs>